Endless Hustle is presented by Routine. Routine helps you unlock optimal health and daily performance by leveraging AI, in-home testing, and the latest in-digital health tools to create a completely personalized micronutrient formula full of vitamins, minerals, and specialty compounds precisely dosed for your body based on your unique DNA, blood tests, and lifestyle habits. The process is simple, and thousands of members are choosing Routine and reporting results like more energy, better stress management, improved mental clarity, and more. Visit routine.co to join. All right, Daniel and Karan, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> Miracle Workers, Oregon Trail. Tell me all about hitting the Oregon Trail. What are viewers getting this season? Um, well, yeah, you know, for people that may not have been familiar with the show before, we are an anthology series, so it changes every year. So the first series was set in heaven. The second series uh, was in the dark ages. And now we are on the Oregon Trail. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I play a preacher who is trying to get our, our town that is on the verge of destruction um, to save themselves by getting them to, uh, to uh, greener pastures in Oregon. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then everything goes wrong that can possibly go wrong in between. Yeah. It wouldn't be television without it, right, Karan? Oh my gosh, it would not be. It would not be TBS without some twists. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your character on the show, Karan. Uh, I play the gunslinger who is hot on the trail of Steve Buscemi's character. Uh, and um, he's been chasing him for years. And he just yeah, he's quite bad at his job because he doesn't seem to be able to catch someone uh, a decade or two older than him on this trail. But, um, you know, um, he falls in love. He gets married. He, like, kills a horse. No, none of that happens. I just keep chasing him. And then the show ends. Um, <laughs> Daniel, for you, we just celebrated 20 years since the birth and the beginning of Harry Potter, but to see your evolution since becoming one of the most iconic characters of all time has been incredible. You've done Broadway, you've done this show, you've done independent movies. Tell me about that evolution and how you've approached it from walking away from Harry Potter. I mean, I think definitely when I, uh, when I, stop doing Potter, I think I had an attitude of like, okay, if I was, if I was starting my career now, what would I want my career to be? Um, and when you're in that position, when you're young and you are in the rare position of having like autonomy and choice and being able to go like, oh, I don't want to do that crappy thing. I want to do this thing I love instead. Like uh, nobody has that. So really it's just been a case of being guided by like, what do I love and what do I want to do? And and increase, and I, I think early on, uh, there were a couple of choices I made that were, were more like, basically anytime I've done something for reasons other than I love it and I think it'll be fun, it has not gone well, <laughs> or, or I haven't been good in it or whatever. But like, uh, yeah, it's definitely, as I've got older, I'm like, yeah, I'm in a position to just do the things that I love with people I love. So I'm gonna, gonna keep that going for as long as I can. Karan, for you, have you ever had a situation like that where you've done either a project or something in your life for reasons other than love? Oh, yeah. That's my everyday life. <laughs> um, I just go wherever there's approval and people will have me um, <laughs> and they will agree to pay me any amount. I will go there and I will make the best of it. Um, so no, um, yeah, I've definitely, I know exactly what Daniel's talking about. Like sometimes when you do projects for the for different reasons, um, it can, you just, it's like you have to sign this contract with yourself where you're like, okay, I'm not gonna maybe have the artistic fulfillment, but I better be okay with that if I'm saying yes to this thing. Um, so yeah, it can, it's, uh, it can be quite interesting because like, you know, making movies and things and all that is really fun, but being on a set where you're not feeling fulfilled can, can it, it's its own version of like torture sometimes because the days are very long and, and um, you can't, like, it's your face up there. So you got to do something <laughs> and you got to say some of these you, lines. When you know early, when it's like something that hits you early on where you're like, oh. Oh gosh, that's the worst. And you're ah. like, we have four more weeks in Alabama, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, for you, obviously the level of fame that you have experienced and continue to experience is unlike anything that most people will ever understand. But yet you've been able to stay so normal, so humble. I've interviewed you multiple times on red carpets. You're always the nicest guy. How were you able to process that and continue to stay just a nice dude? 
Um, I don't know. I think I was like surrounded by a lot of people who would never have let anything else happen. Um, my parents, obviously, but also the crew of Potter was incredibly grounding. Like they came to care about us all as as kids, which meant not letting us turn into, you know, monsters. Um, I also think that there is a there is a a uh, aura around like child stars or child fame. Um, and I would say that like fame is something to be navigated as a kid. It's definitely not entirely healthy for a child to be in that situation, you, you can argue. But film sets themselves are not an inherently bad place for a kid to be. And I found it incredibly like, broadening of me as a person. And like, you know, there's cases that people like to talk about of like child stars that went wrong or whatever. But I don't know, like mo most people I know who started acting really, there are also like, you know, Tobey Maguire and Christian Bale and Elijah Wood and Jodie Foster and all these amazing people who did also start really young who are kind of, you know, who are doing great. So, yeah. One of the main reasons that I started the show was to talk to people who are successful about the principles that help them achieve their success. So my question for both of you is, what do you continue to do throughout your lives to allow yourself to elevate and evolve? I think like trying not to make decisions from the ego is important. Um, Cause a lot of times I think, especially in this business, people will behave differently because they're insecure about their ego being hurt versus like, what did you actually sign up for? Like, I always feel that a lot of times with people who don't want to audition or something, I'm like, our job is to act. So an audition is a place where you're going to act. <laughs> so. Um, I think sometimes, you know, it can get a little bit like people can get caught up in some of the silliness of it all, um, and including myself. So I always have to sort of. And what about myself. you, Daniel? How do you how do you continue to elevate? I mean, I think just um, like I'm in a really fortunate position where I love my job. Um, and as long as you love it, then it, it won't I don't have to motivate myself to work hard at it. Um, and I do think that like, as honestly, like uh, I would say, I don't mean to, I don't want to make people live in fear, but like fear or anxiety, if you are somebody that has some of that is actually like a very motivating factor. Like I, like on I, the film I'm doing right now, like I have a lot of like uh, speeches and kind of quite wordy stuff. And the director the other day was like, mentioned that like I'm very good on my lines and I'm like yeah because I'm so terrified of not being good on my lines that I spend a huge amount of time like learning them all so I can do them if somebody was shouting at me um uh, so you know that I, I think like if you're somebody that like has a bit of that nervous energy or anxiety just like channel that and make that be the thing that makes you work harder than everyone else final question I love the chemistry between all the characters on this show and you can immediately tell that you guys and girls all like each other so Karan, what is one thing about Daniel that would surprise us to learn? And then Daniel, what's one thing about Karan that we would be surprised to learn? Um, Daniel's British accent is fake. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't talk like that. <laughs> no, um, something that would surprise me about Daniel is that, um, that he loves the, name, the game Codenames which we play a lot uh, off screen. Um, and he, and we both, I think, have a shared passion for it. Where we're in a group saying, we're like, can we start playing now? Like, what are we doing? Um, so maybe that's a surprise, yeah. Yeah, Karen Car and I will both be the, the two people at a party who have been invited there with the promise of a game being played. <laughs> Everyone is just like hanging out and drinking, having a nice time. Like, cool guys, but when's this, yeah. when's this game gonna happen? When's the game gonna um, happen? Uh, I, I, I would say that, um, uh, I, the, 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 I hope you don't hate me for sharing this with the world, Karen, but like the OC was a, a formative program in Karen's life and, and, and has, you know, it still was is. a very, very big deal. And it still is. It's, it's a sort of fundamental building block, block of Karen. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, 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 I learned a lot about the OC from talking to Karen at various times this season. So. Guys, congratulations. Miracle Workers, Oregon Trail and TBS. Thanks for a really fun interview and always great seeing you, Daniel, and great meeting you, Karen. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for having us. Take care, guys. Very much. Cheers. Have a good day. Take care, brother.